Hello everyone, my name is Sister Maria Immaculata and I'm one of the Sisters of Our Lady Immaculate from the Diocese of Hamilton and I'm very happy to be with you today to talk a little bit about my vocation and a little bit about religious life. <laughs> um, first of all, a little bit about me. I grew up in a very Catholic home. Um, my parents taught me how to pray. They taught me about God. And, um, but it wasn't until I was about 14 when I started uh, discerning religious life. My principal at my elementary school, he called me in his office one day and he asked me, have you ever thought about being a sister? And I said, no. <laughs> and he said, you should think about it. He, and so from that time onward, I started to develop a relationship with God. I started to pray more. I started to read the Bible more. And after some time, it was really in my heart that God was calling me to something very special and a very special gift. Um, and so in my heart, I knew that he was calling me to be his bride. And so um, eventually, I found the sisters, <laughs> rather they found me, <laughs> in my hometown. They were studying at Our Lady's Seat of Wisdom College in Barry's Bay, which is my hometown. And um, I got up my courage <laughs> to go and talk to them. And I saw how happy they were and how joyful they were. And I, there was something very special about them. And so I decided to come on a come and see retreat. And it was on that come and see retreat that I really felt at home. I felt like um, a very much at peace, very happy amongst the sisters. And there was something very beautiful about the spiritual life of this community. I loved that our devotions were to our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. I love that we had a strong devotion to Our Lady. Um, we pray three rosaries a day. I love the time of silence um, with God and in adoration. I love that we went to Mass every day. <laughs> I loved everything about the spirituality of our community and also um, our apostolates of teaching and caring for the elderly. That was very um, important to me to be able to serve others in that way. Um, so I have been a sister for almost nine years. Wow. <laughs> and I made final vows um, about a year ago. So I belong to Jesus for life. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I'm so happy <laughs> to be in religious life. It's such a special call from God, such a special grace. Um, so one thing that people normally ask about is like, what is a day in the life of a sister, especially a sister of Our Lady Immaculate? Um, well, I have to say, our, our day is very full of um, being in the presence of God and serving others. So um, we wake up pretty early. <laughs> we wake up at about 5.30 in the morning, um, but we, we go straight to the chapel. We go straight to our spouse and we give our day to him. So we pray the Liturgy of the Hours, which is, of course, the prayer of the church. Um, so it consists of psalms and readings, um, very beautiful prayer. And we also have our own um, community prayers so um, that we do together as a community. And we also have a half hour of meditation in the morning. Um, and then we have um, mass and rosary. And of course, we have our meal times during the day as well. <laughs> um, and then in the afternoon, we usually have duties and um, we pray our afternoon rosary, our particular examination, which is an examination of conscience, how we can serve God better throughout the day. And then we have spiritual reading, which is about a half hour, <laughs> um, and that we do together as a community. And of course, we go about our duties. Um, we have mass, we have adoration, we have an hour of adoration every day. Um, which consists of silence and also some community prayers as well. Um, so 
and also too, we have times of recreation. <laughs> you can't forget that. Um, so we have a lot of fun together uh, as sisters. So that might be like going for a walk or, or playing games or, um, yeah, so it's a fun time. It's a fun time together. <laughs> um, and so we usually go to bed around 10.30. <laughs> um, yeah, so of course, you know, sometimes our sisters are studying, so we might um, need to engage in studies at that time. But um, so our, our days is pretty full. Um, for some of our sisters, um, they live in different houses where we have different apostolates, different work. So um, in one of our houses, it's attached to a retirement home. So our sisters there are very much um, working with the elderly. Um, and then we have another house as well where our sisters are very much teaching the faith in, in, in a private school. So. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a remarkable life. It's such a gift to be a sister <laughs> um, and to serve the Lord in this way because it's really a life of generosity and service um, for, for souls. Um, okay, so as well, I, I think it's very important. I'm, I'm standing right here uh, beside a statue of our Blessed Mother because I think she is such a model for religious, of who a religious is really called to be. Um, we're really striving to be like her, to, to love Jesus like her, to um, act like her, to speak like her, you know? And so as Sisters of Our Lady Immaculate, Our Lady is so important in our life as religious. Like I said, we, we strive to be like her in, in everything we do. And um, I think that's very important, um, especially as you, as people are discerning religious life, um, just to have a close relationship with her is, is so important. Um, so I really recommend that. And also spending time with our Lord in Eucharistic adoration is so key. Um, he's just waiting there for you. <laughs> he's waiting for you and he wants to speak with you. And um, that is very important. That was very important for my discernment process as well. I think as well, getting a, a spiritual director is, is very key. Someone that um, you can trust and you can talk to. Normally, um, a priest is, is good to seek out a good, uh, wise priest to speak about discernment and because um, he can help you discern the movements of your heart, where God is, is calling you. Um, so I really recommend that to, to anyone who is discerning a vocation. Um, what are some of the great blessings of religious life? I would say being married to Jesus <laughs> is like number one. Um, you just, you fall in love with the Lord, you know, it's, and some people are like, how can that be? Like, how does that happen? And I say, well, it's kind of like when a young woman falls in love with a man, you know, it's just like she wants to spend time with him. She wants like to be every minute with him, you know, and so it's the same with us as, as sisters and as young women who are discerning, we just fell in love with the Lord. We just wanted to be with him and we, we just wanted him. We just want him, you know? And so I would say that that's a very good sign of, of God calling a young woman is that she desires, you know, to, to be his entirely. Um, and, and that was, as I said before, that was deeply ingrained in me. Like the desire to belong to completely to him was so strong that I just, I just wanted him. I just wanted him. I just wanted to serve him in whatever way I could. Um, so it's, religious life is a remarkable blessing and it's, um, I just, I pray for anyone who is discerning that they will really um, strive to, to enter into a deeper, closer relationship with the Lord. Um, some of the challenges of religious life, um, I would say, you know, when you come to religious life, you discover a lot about yourself and some things that maybe you didn't know before <laughs> and some things that God is like, oh, he's trying to purify and he's trying to make us more whole. And, and so he will reveal things about yourself that it's like, oh, 
you know, that's something that I need to work on, or that is something that um, I didn't know about myself, but I really want the Lord to purify that. Um, so I would say that's one thing, that, that God will reveal reveals to us things about ourselves that He wants to purify because He loves us, and He wants us to grow in our love for Him. I would say another challenge to religious life would probably be um, at times it can be uh, a struggle just carrying on with the duties of the day. Sometimes we really need to pray and ask God to help us to, um, to, to do whatever he's asking us to do with faithfulness and generosity. Um, uh, especially if people need our help or I think about our residents in the retirement home you know when they ask us for help am I able to drop everything and go and serve them um, as best as I can and so that can be a challenge because it's like oh <laughs> but I think it's also so rewarding and and that's part of the self-gift that's part of the total self-gift that that we um, strive to give our Lord and that's not something to be afraid of. That's something to be excited about, that God is going to purify these things in me so that I can love him more deeply. And that is that is a beautiful thing. Yes, so thanks be to God. <laughs> so I cannot stress enough what a blessing it is to be called by God to religious life. It's really a gift. Um, a vocation is really a grace and a gift from God. Um, it's not something we've done to merit it or to earn it. It's purely from God. And uh, what a blessing it is that God called me. He called me. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to him. I'm so thankful. And I want to thank him for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, so a few other things that people normally ask about religious life. And one thing they ask about is what is the process of becoming a sister? And I would say, well, first of all, it starts with that initial call from God. You know, it starts with that that inner, inner voice from God that says, I want you to be mine. I want you to belong to me. Or at least that inner voice that says, you're called to something special. You're called to something more than this world can offer you. A lot of people who um, are discerning religious life find in themselves this desire for something more than this world can give them. And um, that's the beauty of a call. <laughs> and God, God grants that to, to many of us. Um, so I would say the first, the first stage is that initial call from God. You know that that inner that inner desire to be his to be his entirely and then as you move forward in your discernment um, you will obviously be speaking with the spiritual director and um, you'll begin to look into different communities and so um, one thing that I found was very helpful was actually making contact with the community and I know that this is a big step and this can be kind of a step that's a little bit fearful for a lot of people because it's sort of like oh I'm making a step but don't be afraid like the community is there to support you and to pray for you um, so making that initial step of actually contacting a community is very is a very important stage so for me uh, as I said earlier um, when I met the sisters I knew that I was very drawn to them and I was very um, very, very drawn to them, very drawn to their joy and the love for their life. But I was afraid. <laughs> I was afraid. Like my parish priest had to encourage me to, to go and talk to them. So that fear is understandable. Um, but I would say, you know, just having the courage to do that, to make that step. Um, because God will reveal to you what he is calling you to, but we have to do our part as well, right? Um, and so the next stage would actually be visiting a community, visiting a community that you're interested in. Um, so I spoke with the sisters and I actually came and visited and, and entered into the life. So like 
waking up at 5.30, <laughs> you know, doing the duties of the day, like, you know, um, participating in the housework or teaching the faith or helping the elderly at the retirement home. Like, these were things that I did when I was on my come and see retreat. Um, just sort of entering into the life of, of being a sister. And also, too, like, um, getting to know the community, seeing, you know, can I see myself in this community, um, joining this community? Um, and so that's very important, to come and visit, to see, is this where God is calling me to be? And I know that, again, this is a very... Um, this can be a very scary stage for some people, but think of it as God is going to show you through this what his will is for you. And so, as I said before, we're doing our part to take the steps to do that. So once we visit a community, it's really good to be um, in contact with the vocation directress. So she's there to help you um, in, in your discernment. She's there to be a support and a guide. Um, so don't be afraid to go to her <laughs> um, and and then eventually making that step to 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 say yes and to embrace the call and say Lord okay I I sense your call and I'm saying yes to it I'm going for it you know um, for me <laughs> when I was getting ready to say yes to the Lord, I was like, that was a time for me of entering into deep prayer with him and saying, okay, Lord. I remember one time being in the chapel and just saying, okay, yes, Lord, I'll marry you. <laughs> I just, I said to him like, Lord, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to marry you. Like, I really sense this call and it's, it's time. It's time. Um, I think too, it's very important to pray, pray to God that that God will give you the grace to respond yes to him if this is what he's calling you to do. Um, because again, you know, fear can kind of block our yes to God. But but just pray, pray and ask him, Lord, if this is what you're calling me to, I want this too. Please help me to say yes. Um, so that's very important. So, so... Again, like when you when you are preparing to enter a community, there is a process of there's an application process. So you will have to meet with um, the superior general and the other formators of the community, um, the novice mistress, um, in our case. So, and that's really good because it's it's an opportunity to get to know the superior and to get to know the formators. Um, who will be helping you on this journey. Um, I remember meeting um, my novice mistress, my superior general for the first time and just being so like, I felt like I was being listened to and heard and that they really cared about me and they really wanted to help me discern God's will. So that that's very important. Um, and even too, as I was applying, they were very helpful in helping me through the application process. So once you apply, um, you wait for your little letter in the mail. <laughs> so a letter comes in the mail of your acceptance, and you're all happy because you've been accepted. And I remember just like waiting by the mailbox and just being like, oh, God, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. You know? <laughs> um, and so, and then in that letter, it will say your day of entrance. So for me, it was the Feast of St. Joseph. And St. Joseph is a very powerful patron as well. Uh, when you're discerning, he will help you as well. Um, so I entered on the Feast of St. Joseph in 2011. So I remember that day so clearly in my mind. I remember coming into the convent, having that sense of like, I'm... I'm home, <laughs> you know, I'm home, I'm home with the Lord, I'm giving my life to Him, and it's kind of like taking that step of faith and trust that the Lord is with me, He's with me, and He's guiding me um, closer to Himself, more in union with Himself, so it's, it's really doing the application and entering is a step of faith. It's actually like, I would say it's like heroic faith and trust that Lord, this is where you've called me and this is where I want, I want to be. This is where I want to serve you. 
you have called me, here I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, there are different stages to religious life. So you enter as, in our community, you enter as a candidate. So that, that's about a three month period um, where again, you're observing the life, you're, you're entering into the life of the sisters, the prayer life. Um, after that three month period, um, um, you 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 speak with your formator, so and you say to her that you feel ready to move forward to the next stage, which would then be postulancy. So postulancy is a really exciting stage of religious life because it's the first time that you're able to wear a veil. <laughs> so in our community, you start off by wearing gray, um, a gray um, vest and a gray skirt and a white blouse. And, but when you become a postulant, you, you receive a gray veil. So that's, all, that's a very exciting moment for sisters to be able to put on a veil, which is a sign that we are brides. So it's like, woo! <laughs> and then after postulancy, of course, is the novitiate. So the novitiate, now this is a very special stage of religious life, a very key stage because, um, not only are you entering more deeply into the life of the community and religious life in general, but you're putting on the habit of the community. You are actually identifying with the community. So that's a huge step. And it's also the step where you receive a new religious name. <laughs> so, and that happens at the ceremony. So I have to tell you, in our community, we don't know our new name until the ceremony. So, so I remember kneeling down at the altar and hearing my name for the first time and what a joy that was to hear it for the first time. Um, yes, so, so novitiate is a very special time and, and as well it's the time where you learn more deeply about the vows and about the rule of life in our community. So um, how we live religious life, how we live the vows in our community you enter more deeply into our spiritual life, you enter more deeply into the apostolate, which is the work of the community, um, the mission of the community, if you will. Um, uh, and then after novitiate, um, after the two year novitiate period, um, you will write a letter to your superior general and the council asking to make vows. And this is an exciting time because this is like where you are coming before God and you're saying, Lord, yes, I've heard your call. Yes, I'm responding. Yes, I want to live your call in this community, in this way of life. And it's so amazing and so beautiful. And then you, you get the blue veil <laughs> uh, in our community. So, so every stage there's like a kind of a growth that happens. And then after the five years of renewing those vows, uh, you will, uh, please God, make final vows and receive a ring. So I have my ring here. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's very special. And it's just where you, where you come before God and you say, okay, Lord, this is forever. This is forever. For all eternity, I am yours. I am your bride. Um, and that is, such a remarkable gift you know um i have found as i live religious life more and more that i have gained so much you know I, that the lord has given me so much you know i've lost i have lost nothing but i've gained so much you know and god is never outdone in generosity you know he whatever fears you have about discerning religious life he is going to take care of them all. <laughs> He's going to take care of them all. So don't be afraid. And I think that's the bottom line. Don't be afraid. You know, pray for the grace to embrace the call, just like our Blessed Mother did. She embraced the call. She said, yes, even if you don't know what that means or what's going to happen or what the future holds, you know, just Pray for the grace to have courage to say yes, like Our Lady did, you know, and um, she will help you yeah, as she has helped me. So God bless you all. Um, I'm praying for you. <laughs> and um, it's so wonderful to talk to you.
to you today and um, God bless you. Thank you.